So you already read the title of this video, so I don't need to give you an introduction about how we're doing procedural cogs, right? This is what this tutorial is about. We want to make gears and cogs and all this without, uh, you know, the destructive workflow, right? We want to be able to edit it at any point. Now, uh, traditionally, the way you do this is you'd use the extra objects add-on. You go to Shift A, Mesh, you go to Gear, and you're like, oh, I can make a nice little gear. And we have uh, settings for this, change the shape of it, whatever. Uh, but the moment we move it, uh, we don't get control over it anymore. So that, that that's lame. Let's do it the cool way. Uh, here's how we're going to do it. Select the cube, go to geometry nodes. We're going to make a geo nodes group out of this, uh, meaning, you know, this is a completely procedural workflow. So I'm going to start off with a star, by the way, if you don't have one of the newer versions of Wonder, I'm using 3.1, you might be missing some of these nodes, so make sure you have the newer version. Start off with the curve star. This gives you a star that is a curve object. We can control the number of points. We can control the radius inside and outside, and also the twist, a bunch of cool stuff but it doesn't look like a gear, but it is the foundation for one. To make it a gear, we're gonna do a operation to this curve. We're gonna fillet it like a fillet mignon, except it's not food and it's um, it's a node. <laughs> so uh, fillet it, what that's gonna do is it's gonna take these points and kind of bevel them in a two dimensional sense. So you can see here, we're changing the radius. You don't wanna go too far, so limit radius. We'll make sure that if you go too far, it just goes to the nearest um, regular polygon, whether that be a dodecahedron, that no, that's a 3D shape, whatever. So you can see how we're starting to get a cog shape. I'm just gonna increase the number of points. And as we do that, we gotta decrease our fillet. So this is already looking pretty good. Um, take that, we wanna have a circle in the middle kind of cut out of this. So I'm just gonna merge this with a curved circle. So uh, notice everything I'm adding here is a curve object. None of these are meshes. So curved circle, join these together. And now we have kind of the cutout in the middle that can be any size and any uh, you know number of sides. To turn this into a mesh now, uh, we have two curves, one inside the other. All we need to do is now use the fill curve, which is gonna turn this into a mesh. So you can see, boop, just like that. So uh, notice that even though we have two curves joined, it can still differentiate inside from outside. So if we increase this, um, it can still do that as long as we don't go too far, then we get a inverted cog, which looks cool in its own right, okay? Um, next, we wanna give this thing thickness. There's no way to do that in geometry nodes. I know, I've tried. There used to be an extrude node, but they got rid of it for some reason. I don't know. Uh, so we're gonna have to add a solidify modifier, which is kinda lame that we have to outsource it, but whatever. Uh, still, all the control is in this uh, modifier, or sorry, in this geometry nodes thing. So if we increase the number of points, it will do that, um, but then apply the uh, solidify. So you can see we can do this. Uh, we can change this, we can change this, whole bunch of stuff. A um, couple other things I want to talk about. So, I mean, you can already make a procedural cog, uh, but let's talk about how to make it look good and have it interact. So first of all, a uh, bevel modifier. This is just an extra something. Take down the amount, bring up the number of divisions. This is just going to make it look a bit smoother because everything should have a bit of an edge to catch the light. So it's going to do this geometry nodes. Then it's going to go through this modifier stack, which we can hide. And uh, yeah, okay, let's have them interact. So once we have this, we want it spinning. I'm gonna transform it using the Z rotation and we can type in a command, hash frame divided by 30. That's gonna give us the frame number 30 times slower. So that gives us rotation. You want two cogs? No problem, <laughs> just shift D to duplicate them. I'm just gonna move it on the X axis. Let's do that from the top view. You can see this one's rotating the wrong way since you know every cog goes the opposite. You know what I mean? So take it. Rotate it on the y-axis by 180. Now it's going the other way. I'm just gonna freeze frame it here, reposition it, and now they are perfectly melding together. Now the cool thing about this is since this is a geometry nodes, I don't know why this moved up. Since this is geometry nodes, every single uh, one of these can have different uh, shapes and sizes. So let's talk about how to do that. So final thing, uh, group input. This is just gonna let us customize things. Anything that you wanna control, the number of points, anything like this, I'm just gonna add as a parameter and you can see it's gonna show up here. So you don't have to do all of these. I'm just gonna do all of these for a demonstration. So you can see now both of these have all these parameters in our geometry node. So, uh, I mean, they should have the same number of points or it could have twice the number of points but rotate twice as fast, uh, whatever. Uh, we can control, let's do one of these have a smaller kind of cutout. So I'm gonna bring down the radius and let's make this one a square. You can see they still fit together. We can always add in another cog. So I'm gonna do it like this. Uh, we need to rotate, or we need to flip the direction, I believe. Reposition it. And uh, this one can have no cutout at all. 
and it can be a bit twisted, like my soul. There we go. And, uh, I mean, you know, cogs. There's not much to it. We've done it in geometry nodes, and uh, you're welcome. 